welcome to Astro GTV's news from Monday, March 18, 2024. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. Five schools in the Kingston area today hosted a joint tsunami drill as teachers and students tested their school's evacuation plan. Coordinating the drills was principal of the Kingston Technical Institute, Bertillon Hamilton, who said the exercise was a success as they prepared the schools, namely the Bishop's College, St. Martin's Secondary, St. Joseph's Convent, Kingston, the School for Children with Special Needs, and the Kingston Technical Institute for an eventual tsunami. For the purpose of the drill, we had to ensure that the students, um, for their safety, exited the facility in a calm manner. Manner. Um, we know in a real event there may be some panic and persons will operate differently but for the purpose of the drill we had to ensure that everything was done in such a way that the students remain safe at all time and the staff remain safe at all time that there were no injuries we ha had to contend with the traffic as well and we had we had a number of persons out here um, with fluorescent vests on assisting in controlling the flow of traffic the tsunami drill was supported by the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, and the Ministry of Education. It was emphasized that today's exercise that all schools should have an emergency evacuation plan for teachers, students, and others to move to higher grounds in the event of a tsunami. In terms of a tsunami, the, uh, for the purpose of the exercise for the drill this, mo this morning, the Bishop's College, they would have mustered at the Grandin's South Car Park. The students from St. Martin's and School for Children's Special Needs, they mustered in the area of the Petersville Primary School. The students from St. Joseph Convent, their muster point was at um, Block 2000 Panyard. And the students from Kingston Technical Institute, their muster point was at the um, Singer Building, Singer Storeroom. But um, for a real event, the students from Kingston Technical Institute, their muster point would be at the Lodge Village Primary School. Principal of the St. Martin's Secondary School says that following today's tsunami drill, some weaknesses have been identified which they will have to address. It was, there are some things that we need to improve on. Um, perhaps looking at how students exit the school and the order that is required when they get to the top at the muster point to ensure that we do um, the check of the students expeditiously. Right? So those are two things already we've identified as some of the challenges and we're going to be working on and readjusting our plans to ensure that the students are taken from the school to the master point quickly and without much um, disturbances or, or, or errors or as, as the case may be. Other schools are being encouraged to review their emergency evacuation plan and to have tsunami drills at least once a year. In the earlier part of this year's dry season, there has been a lot of bushfires, particularly in the Camlin Park, Kittles, Chauncey area, which raise a number of concerns, including that of rock slides when rains come. This is according to Director of Forestry, Fitzgerald Providence, who on NBC Radio's face-to-face -face program today said that given the prolonged dry season, the coastal areas are drier and more susceptible to fires. Uh -oh. Some, some of the reasons are, are what's, what the causes of, of, of these particular fires, as you mentioned, Camden Park, and I know usually there's, there's this uh, uh, area in Edinburgh, Otley Hall area that usually burns almost every, every year we have a dry season. What are the causes of these fires? Well, we've concluded that most of the causes are due to um, human. Um, they sometimes persons may say it's spontaneous combustion due to someone, there's a glass, a piece of bottle that causes um, the sunlight to be magnified and it starts a fire. That could happen, but when we look, when we investigate, um, most of these fires are started by, by out of mystery for someone trying to clear the land and also persons trying to flush wildlife out of the out of the bush so that they can catch them although we're in in a the the off season for hunting so um we know it's caused by that and you have to have three elements in terms of you have to have the fuel which is the grass you have to have um 
the air, the oxygen, and you have to have an ignition point. And the ignition point is usually someone who discards uh, maybe a cigarette carelessly, um, someone who mischievously starts it, or someone burning burning the refuse or around the yard and it, it jumps into the dry area mm-hmm. because you know people take the opportunity during the dry season to clear land. Um, but when we when they do that, we encourage them to to make sure they put a what we call a fire trace around it so that there's a clear area where there's no fuel so that it protects their fire from getting into the into the um, natural vegetation around. Providence said members of the Forest Mapping and Inventory Unit are currently collecting information on the number of fires thus far and after the data has been compiled, the information will be made available. However, he said compared to last year, they have noted more fires in the earlier period of the dry season this year. Providence said they are also concerned about the impact of the dry season on rivers. Um, so during the dry season some of the rivers get very low and this gives opportunity for persons to catch um, the crustacean the crayfish and also the the fish the mullets and so on that lives in the in the rivers um we are concerned about this because there would have been the impact of the volcanic eruption but the rivers are coming back uh, we had a study um, in collaboration done by um, mr john renton and that's produced a lot of information on what what are the animals in our in our rivers. But during during the dry season, these these rivers get a little bit slow. They, their pools develop that the crayfish and so on would be in. So people, persons will take the opportunity to go and fish. Also, we coming into the Easter season where there's um where persons like to well, it's traditional to eat your fish and and, um, and aquatic and marine mm-hmm. animals. So we noticed that there would be a heightened to catch a fish, but we are concerned of how people catch the, the creatures in the river. One, they tend to want to use sometimes poisons or substances that would stupefy or irritate the fish or even kill them. Um, this we do not encourage because um, you you stupefy or killing the fish and the crustaceans. But when you eat those things, what you use to kill them gets into your body. It may be a small supply, but our body tends to store some some of these things, and then you have long-term effects. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the, the creatures, you kill everything, from babies to adults. If you use the traditional measure of, of catching, which is a basket, um, you'll be able to select the bigger, the mature animals and leave the young ones or... Um, that can reproduce and continue to sustain the supply of these crustaceans within your within the rivers. The forestry department will on Thursday, March 21st, celebrate International Day of Forests under the theme Forests and Innovation, New Solutions for a Better World. The day, which has been celebrated since 2012, seeks to highlight or the awareness or of forests and the importance of forests in the lives of the people throughout the world. Forest plays in terms of the what we call the ecosystem services, including capturing carbon, cleaning the air, as well as those things. And this year, it's looking at innovation. And we have been very innovative with the use of our forests. We see the developing nature, um, tourism aspect where we, in the recent times, you've seen trails being developed where persons can go and enjoy nature, understand what goes on in the forest and how it how it works and the importance to our, our lives and livelihoods. Improper disposal of waste continues to be a major problem for the environmentalists in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. On Saturday, close to 400 pounds of trash was collected from the river in the Arnesville area. The Caribbean Natural Resources Institute, Connery, partnered with other environmental groups and organizations in observance of International Day of Action for Rivers. We hear more in this report. 
we had in total 393 pounds of garbage being picked up and it's very sad to see that that's so much trash and um, amount of the trash was actually branded products and it's so sad that our youths today who use this site as a recreational site to hang out uh, on evenings are actually using the riverbank as a dumping site. That was Dion Nero of the Caribbean Youth Environment Network who joined the Caribbean Natural Resources Institute Canary in the cleanup and who helped in weighing the trash. The cleanup forms part of Canary's blue-green economic development model for coastal adaptation, livelihoods and sustainability in St. Vincent. As you can see here, we have the river and it shows that all the activities that take place on land, so the littering, the improper disposal of wastewater, all leads down to our oceans. And of course, there are very fragile and important ecosystems which are there. So it is really important that we teach our young ones, we had the Cub Scouts today, and also those who are part of the wider community of the importance of ensuring that their activities on land are sustainable, that they are disposing of their litter properly and all the actions that they do here doesn't affect what's going on within our marine ecosystem. Following the cleanup, communications officer with the National Parks, Rivers and Beaches Authority, Tonique Barrow, says they will be looking to ramp up environmental awareness and will be even taking a step further by meeting with business owners in the vicinity of the river. We've seen here the, the litter that we've collected shows that persons are not disposing of their litter in a proper way. So we definitely have to do more vigorous um, awareness and see what kind of, what sort of intervention measures would be needed, especially in this area. There's a lot of, there's supermarkets, there's KFC and other business places and and we're going to be hopefully engaging with these um, businesses to see how we can all come together to support the environment and help um, keep this area. And it's a beautiful area, as you see, it's a beautiful area where persons can recreate. But we have to do that responsibly and we have to all play our part. The Boy Scouts and the SVG Community College Environment Group have also promised to do their part in ensuring the river is litter free. I just want to say that it has been an exhilarating experience, very rewarding, and I encourage people to come out and do your part as a people so that we don't have to be taking a reactive response but more a proactive one. If everyone does their part, then we wouldn't have to be cleaning up as much. Today, we tried to tackle one of the SDGs, which is keeping our environment clean. And as a scout movement, we try to keep our environment clean. And since our headquarters is located in the area, we might have to focus on the Annisville area. Another cleanup is likely to be held before the month is out. For SVG TV News, Larissa Pogsley Kidd. Charles Cornelius James, former Senator and former Governor General's Deputy AG, was laid to rest on Saturday, March 16, 2024, at the San Jose Cemetery following an official funeral service at the New Life Ministries Church in North Union. Before the funeral service, his body was laid in a state inside the chambers of House of Assembly in Glen, where government officials and other dignitaries, as well as members of the public, got the opportunity to view his body. At the service, a number of glowing tributes were paid to Charles, including from Prime Minister Dr. Alf Salves, who described him as a stalwart, an iconic figure in the community and a leader of the highest quality. It is a measure of our civilization, not only in the way we live our lives and in our dying, but the way in which we celebrate the lives of those who have gone to the great beyond, particularly those of our distinguished sons and daughters. There may be no memorial marble and stone for Charles, but there is in the hearts of men and women who knew him and who loved him an unwritten memorial of his high quality. Charles James came from very humble beginning. And there is something in the James family that marked out the young men who grew up in that household for positions of leadership. In everything that he did, there was a majesty about Charles, as though 
he originated in West Africa from royal lineage. He had a bearing of royal distinction about him. And if you notice his children too, they have that bearing. It is something which is not defined and you can't particularize it. But somehow when you see it, you know it. Charles Cornelius James represented what the poet Robert Frost had mused about. I shall be saying this ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in the woods. And I, I chose the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. He chose a road for himself. Parliamentary representative for the area supporter season, his tribute said Charles James was a big name and will forever be a big name in the area who had an impact on his life from childhood up until his passing. Going around in the constituency, from house to house, people are asking me, you talk to Charles James yet? I say, talk to Charles James. I told the chairman, I say, People say we have to talk to Charles James. He said, yes, we have to. I say, so you're allowing me alone to go talk to him or you're coming too? Because I can't turn up alone in Charles James' porch. And we took a delegation and we sat down with him. And when I sat in the porch, I realized that Charles James had in his porch a veritable university for political education. He understood the entire, con all of the contours of the constituency. And I got from him that their very important lesson, which built on lessons I've learned in Sunday school and in church. Love your people. And in my 40s, Charles James became a very close friend, a very close friend of the family, and would definitely be missed. The Constituency Council Executive of South Central Winwood, Unity Labour Party, we are going to miss him. And I'm asking for the family, continue in his legacy, his hard work. May the soul of my dear brother Comrade and friend, rest in peace. Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Goddard, on Friday was also on hand to pay tribute to the late Charles James, whom he said is deserving of the respect and tributes being paid to him for his service to the people. I have very little knowledge to compare to the other speakers who have been before me. What I do know and what I have heard and what I do appreciate is that he was a man who gave service to his community. He was somebody who was well respected, somebody who had views about things that were happening around him and sought to do something about it. Sometimes it is easier for us to just simply say, let other people worry about that. Let them make the changes, let them take the headache, let them take the criticism. But when somebody stands up, especially those of us who are in this business of politics, where everybody except you knows what you're supposed to do. This is how it goes. And you take these slings and arrows, but you know that you're doing it for the good of the people. From what I understand here today, he's somebody who lived that life, and I want to say to his family, I appreciate that contribution, and quite frankly, that sacrifice that sometimes is made. And I wish more of us will do it. Thank you very much for the opportunity, for these few words. And Mr. This honorable gentleman deserves our praise, our respect, and of course, the tributes that are being given to him here today. In other news now, police in the Calico district have launched an investigation into the circumstances surrounding a suspected drowning that occurred on Sunday, March 17th at the Brighton Beach, which claimed the life of Police Constable 849 Robin Spencer of Diamond, who was a serving member of the RSVG Police Force and attached to the Narcotics Unit. 
The police say, according to preliminary investigations, Spencer and one of his friends went fishing at the aforementioned beach sometime after 1 p.m. Reports indicate that sometime after 3 p.m. while fishing, Spencer was swept out to sea by a wave and succumbed to death. The SVG Coast Guard was notified and a team of officers immediately proceeded to the area on a Coast Guard vessel and conducted a search and rescue exercise. Spencer's unresponsive body was recovered from the water by members of the Coast Guard who unsuccessfully performed CPR on him. Spencer was transported to the Coast Guard base where he was pronounced dead by a medical practitioner. A post-mortem examination was expected to be conducted on the body today to ascertain the exact cause of death. Commission of Police AG Enville Williams, gazetted officers and the rank and file members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and its Auxiliary Police Force extends their deepest condolences to the widow, family and friends of Constable Spencer. Anyone with information that can assist with this and other investigations are asked to contact the police at emergency numbers 911 or 999, the Calioca Police Station at 458-4200, or any police station or police officer they are comfortable speaking with. The police say any information received would be dealt with confidentially. Marcy Batiste of the Sandy Bay Secondary School took the top position in the Adelphi National Heroes Day public speaking competition. Batiste was victorious in the main prepared speech and the best impromptu speech categories of the competition. All of the participants shared their views on the main topic for the prepared speech. Paramount Chief Joseph Chartier is SVG's first and only national hero, using a criteria for national hero, who should be our next national hero and why. In the impromptu speech, the participants selected topics ranging from social media, van culture, the school rules, and Easter. In Batista's prepared speech, she spoke in favor of having Shara Agata Batiste as SVG's next national hero. By 1942, Mother Sarah was delivering babies from Fancy to Georgetown. To the people, she was a nurse, doctor, and midwife. She would listen to the people's ailments and recommended herbs to heal them. After rigorous training and being the eldest nurse in training at the hospital, mother devoted her work to the people north of the Rabaka Dry River. When there was no access to help her, she stepped in and served the people over the Dry River. She rode mules and donkeys to get to her destination, no matter the hour. In an interview, mother recalls delivering over 2,300 babies. She gave herself a pat on her back and boasted that she never lost one baby. She was also instrumental in starting the Girl Guides, the Mother's Union, and the church. By honoring Sarah Agatha Batiste as our next national hero, we are not only recognizing her individual achievements, but also celebrating the contributions of women to our society and the world at large. Hair is who the other participants say should be considered to the status of SVG's next national hero. Dr. John Parmenas Eustace, affectionately known as Doc or J.P. Eustace. Eustace should unquestionably be recognized as the next national hero of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Dr. Eustace emerges as a compelling candidate for this esteemed title. His life's work exemplifies the very essence of heroism, dedication, and selflessness. Madam Chairperson, I am sure you would agree with me that honoring persons while they are alive brings a greater sense of appreciation and value to that person. They get the op opportunity to receive this while they are still with us. With this in mind, I think that person should be our current Governor General, Dame Susan Duggan. Dame Duggan is an outstanding female since she engenders the qualities of a national hero. There are other impactful women to consider such as Ivy Joshua and Rene Batiste. Dame Duggan is a selfless humanitarian who has committed herself to serving her country and did this in various capacities. Chairperson, I thought long and hard about what best thing will be our 
next national hero. Who is that person, living or dead, that can step into chief Shatoya's shoes? I thought about the achievements of the individual, the selfless sacrifice given towards our country, and the noble qualities the individual possesses. This person is no other than our esteemed Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph E. Gonsalves. Chairperson, let us examine Dr. Gonsalves' courage. Courage by definition is the strength of mind to carry on or persevere in spite of danger or difficulty. This definition sums up Dr. Ralph Gonsalves. Here's a bit from the participants' impromptu speeches. I, I implore you of with me in saying that social media it can have its advantages and disadvantages but let us all use social media for the good and the betterment of our society now the van culture is good for when you want to have a good time but the loud music in it is very at times annoying especially when you're trying to get somewhere with no distractions Think about how the school would be if we didn't have any rules. Like, for instance, we obviously cannot bring in weapons to our school. And, you know, when, well, students get a lot of aggression, so if I tell them something and they do not, they do not like it, they can go on to fight. So, what if the school didn't have rules and we could have worked with weapons in the school? I think it's better to, to fight with hand than to fight with weapons. Easter is a time when everyone will like to leave school. This is a time that we get to go and leave and spend time with our family. Growing up, at one point, everyone believes in the Easter Bunny. Come on, it's Easter. <laughs> Easter is just around the corner, and we students we are very happy to leave the school. Sometimes we are the fit of the teachers. Who are in agree? <laughs> Delicia Nanton of the Emanuel High School, Mesopotamia, placed second. Ebony Nanton of the Sinclair Deacon Secondary School was third, and Nicholas Clark was fourth. All of the participants received cash prizes and certificates of participation. The Calico Anglican School culminated its Literacy Week of activities today under the chosen theme from the Ministry of Education, Read What You Write. The Literacy Week of activities was spearheaded by the school's literacy coordinator, Laverne Peters-James, and her committee. In an interview with SVG TV News, James said that the Literacy Week was a success, noting that the students were enthusiastic about participating in the various activities. Wednesday we did our first pieces of writing where, and the editing where the children were putting their pieces together properly, correcting their little mistakes and so on. And then on Thursday we had our final draft being put together for presentation, which is the creation of our books, our posters and whatever. Is this the first time that the children about something like this? Actually yes. As I said, we were keeping in, to in, in tune with the theme from the Ministry of Education, which is read what you write. And I'm particularly happy for this theme because usually we do things and I'm not so sure how much learning comes from it. But with this, you can actually see the children's work and you can actually hear them reading it. It's what they produce, so you can actually hear them reading it. So it was a very welcome theme here at Calico Anglican School. Actually, the teachers vetted the students' work and the fact that they were able to read what they wrote. Peter James outlined the various activities held for the school's literacy week. The kindergartens were responsible for my ABC adventure, which is taking the letters of the alphabet, creating sentences, and as we see a while ago, they were just reading their sentences. The grade ones were responsible for word families, which we dubbed the We Are Family, where they were writing little stories and little sentences and creating their little booklets on whatever word family they were working with. The grade twos were responsible for reading quotes. Grade twos were just given tablets, so we, we decided to incorporate um, research 
the internet. So they went on the internet with their tablets and they researched and they found reading quotes that was suitable for their age levels and they created a book of reading quotes and they dubbed it Mark My Word. We have grade three. Um, they, grade three were responsible for making posters. Um, posters of what they think reading is about. So instead of they being involved in books, they were responsible for doing posters. And the other class were, was responsible for making bookmarkers. Yes, so we had grade four involved in poetry and writing songs, raps in particular. Hopefully we'll hear one of the raps that they wrote today being sung. And they got their, they dubbed their session, I've got rhythm to the blues. And then we have grade five who did descriptive and expository writing and it was dubbed show us what you can do and then finally our grade six persuasive writing just try to convince me so here's a snippet of one of the activities by the students of the calico amican school presented at today's closing of their literacy week it says football fun to play with my friends Outside all day, overly energized. Today is a great day to play. Beat the ball like Pele. Always very competitive. There was a cat named Lou who wore a who wore a hat that it was new. He danced on a mat after he caught a rat. We can save water in many ways. Water goes through a water cycle and precipitation or rain rainfalls allows water to come back to be collected in different places on the earth. The truth of the matter is most discussions I hear are about games, WhatsApp, Instagram, TikTok, who has the latest phone, tablet, or brand name clothes and shoes, which is crazy. Rarely do I ever hear a discussion about a good book that was read. Children should read more to expand their vocabulary. Reading exposes children to many new words. My sweater is a Big. Big. He play ball. He can kick. Crocodile play. 